And hey guys, today I will do a core two exam review on WAC, which stands for Weighted Average Cost of Capital. In the first phase, we'll cover all the formulas within WAC, including cost of debt and cost of equity. In the second phase, we'll quickly go over two practice problems to help you reinforce on how to calculate WAC. Uh, first off, I have some notes here on the side for you guys about WAC. WAC is the cost of capital for the entire firm. The cost of capital should be as lowest as possible. Your optimal, your optimal WAC is when it's at its lowest, so the lower the better. Debt is added until the point where WAC will start to increase. This means that the potential bankruptcy costs will start to outweigh the tax benefits. WAC is also known as your minimum required rate of return. In capital project calculations, when your internal rate of return is greater than WAC, it's a green light for you to go ahead and accept the project. Um, WAC, or a minimum required rate of return, is also used as your I component for NPV calculations. So we'll first cover the formula for WAC. Um, it's weight of debt multiplied with cost of debt, and then add weight of preferred stock multiplied with cost of preferred stock, add weight of equity multiplied with cost of equity. So the result of WAC should be a percentage. I'll first cover how to calculate cost of debt. Uh, there's two me I'll show you guys two methods on how to calculate cost of debt. The first method is debt rate multiplied uh, bracket, one minus your tax rate bracket. And then the second method is using the rate function in Excel. Uh, so equal sign rate and then bracket and then Excel will tell you how to input your PV, your FE, your PMT, and your N. The next is cost of preferred stock. There's also two methods we can use to calculate this. The first is taking your total annual preferred dividends paid on preferred shares divided by your total market value of all preferred shares outstanding. The second method to calculate cost of preferred stock is taking your total annual dividend paid per preferred share divided by your current market price per preferred share. In the second method, uh, it can also come off as total annual dividend paid per preferred share divided by your net proceeds of each share. And then to calculate cost of equity, there's also two methods. Uh, the first one is risk-free return rate plus bracket beta times your risk premium bracket. Uh, sometimes in a question, they won't give you the risk premium. Uh, so to calculate risk premium, you can take the higher market rate and then you subtract it with the risk-free rate to find the risk premium. So the second method to calculate cost of equity is taking next year's annual dividend divided by the current year stock price uh, and then plus the dividend growth rate. So the cost, so in general, the cost of debt, the cost of preferred stock, and the cost of equity should all be percentages. The next items we want to calculate are the weight of debt or the weight of preferred stock or the weight of equity. There's various ways uh, on how you can calculate the weights. It's uh, using math and it's just using math and algebra. So the first method is, let's say they gave you the debt balances or the preferred stock balances or the common stock balances. You can divide it by the total value. So debt balance divided by the total value will give you the weight of debt. Um, to find weight of preferred stock, you can take preferred stock divided by total value. Uh, for weight of equity, you can take the common stock value divided by your total value to find weight of equity. All these weights should also be percentages. The total value is just your debt balance plus your preferred stock plus your common stock. That, if you add those together, that represents the total value of the company. The second method on how to calculate uh, the weightings are using percentages. So the total value of a company is at 100%, at right? So the total value of a company equals long-term debt plus your equity. So let's say if the question gives, says that liabilities represent 60%, this therefore must mean that equity is the other 40%. In the third method, let's say the 
question only gives you the total long-term debt value and the weight of debt. So what I showed here is, let's say you're missing total value. So what you can do is you can move weight of debt down here to find total value over here. So it would be total long-term debt divided by weight of debt to find your total value. Now that you have your total value, so what you can do next is take your total value minus long-term debt to find your total equity. And then to find your weight of equity, you can take total equity divided by the total value you just found earlier to find uh, your weight of equity. Let's go ahead and try the two practice problems. Let's start with example one. You guys can go ahead and pause the video and then try to find the whack yourself. I'm going to start doing the solution now. So we'll start with the whack formula. Uh, in this problem, we only have to worry about debt and equity. Therefore, the formula will be uh, weight of debt multiplied with cost of debt add weight of equity multiplied with cost of equity so in this problem it says our long-term debt represents 60 percent and 60% equal to $300. So let's say we want to find the total value. What is at 100%? All we're going to do is just cross multiply. So 300 times 100% divided by 60%. We're going to cross multiply and then find that our total value is 500. Uh, so therefore, the other 40% must be $200, the remaining, right? So 40% of 500 is 200. Or you can just take 500 minus 300 to find 200. So uh, the next items we can solve are the weightings. So the weight of debt, we'll take the value of debt, which is 300 divided by the total value, 500. 500. So 300 divided by 500 is 60%. And then we'll take the way, uh, the value of equity, which is 200, we just found, divided by uh, the total value of 500. So 200 divided by 500 is 40%. And then the next item we can solve is the cost of equity. In this problem, it gave us current year, dividends, dividends growth rate, and market price of a share. Um, so we can calculate this by taking next year's annual dividend divided by the current stock price and then plus the dividend growth rate. For next year's annual dividend we can calculate that by taking uh, the current year's dividend multiply bracket 1 plus the dividends growth rate and then divided by the current uh, stock price which is ninety dollars our two dollars and ten cents for next year's annual dividend and divided by our current stock price of ninety dollars this will convert it to a percentage, uh, giving us 2%. We're going to add our dividend growth rate of 5%. So then when we put the calculations all together, it will give us a cost of equity of 7.33%. So now that we have all the items uh, calculated, let's put them all together. So our weight of debt was 60%. And then we'll multiply it with our cost of debt of 20%. And then for our weight of equity, it was 40%. And then we'll multiply it with 
uh, the cost of equity that we just found out, 7.33%. And then if we add these together, it will give us a whack of 15%. Okay, let's go ahead and give our second example a try. You guys can pause the video now and try to solve whack on your own. I'm going to go ahead and start the solution now. In this problem, we only have to worry about debt and equity, so therefore the formula for whack will be weight of debt multiplied with the cost of debt add weight of equity uh, multiplied with the cost of equity. Next items we can solve for are the weightings. In this problem it gave us long-term debt balance and an equity balance. We can add these together to find the total value. Uh, so 500 plus 700 will give us a total value of 1,200. And then to find the weight of debt, we can just simply take the long-term debt value of 500 divided by our total value of 1,200 to give us 42%. To find our weight of equity, we'll take our equity value divided by our total value of 1,200 to get 58%. Uh, and then the next item that we can solve for is cost of debt. Uh, the formula for cost of debt is our debt rate times times bracket 1 minus the tax rate so our, our current yield on debt is 6% uh, multiplied bracket 1 minus our tax rate of 15% this will give us a cost of debt of 5.10% and then the formula for cost of equity is risk free return rate plus bracket uh, beta times the risk premium bracket. So in this problem, it didn't give us the risk premium, but we can calculate for it. To calculate the risk premium, we'll take the higher market rate minus the risk free rate. We'll take the market rate of 9% minus the risk free rate of 4%. This will give us the risk premium of 5%. Let's plug it into our cost of equity formula. We'll take our risk-free return rate of 4% plus bracket our beta of 1.5 times our risk premium of 5% bracket. This will give us a cost of equity of 12%. Let's go back to our WAC formula and put all of these together. So our weight of debt was 42% multiplied with our cost of debt of 5.10% and then our weight of equity was 58% multiplied with our cost of equity of 12% and then if we add these together it will give us a whack of 9% thank you for watching guys uh, there will be a part two to this video so stay tuned and uh, comment like subscribe to help uh, support the channel thanks